Welcome to class. In the series of founding fathers of social linguistics, uh, today we will talk about William Lebov, who is pioneer of the variationist tradition in social linguistics. Uh, his works inspired a wide range of scholars across Europe and America and his methods were adopted by many people like Trudgill, Peter Trudgill and others. His two works, the first case study of Martha's Vineyard Island of the USA and the second case study of English in New York City. You know, this, 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 these two works opened a new tec technique, method and approach to look at language use in the real situation. It also stands in opposition to the Chomskyan tradition of generative paradigm and uh, you know, the methods, techniques he developed and used in his studies inspired the whole generation of linguists and he gave a new perspective for looking at the data on uh, and understanding language as a phenomena in action. So, we will talk about William Leboff today with a specific reference to the first case study that he carried out in 1963 at Martha's Vineyard Islands. But before that, we will have a brief bio of this founding father of modern social linguistics and pioneer of variationist tradition in social linguistics. So, his approach to look at language from synchronic perspective and uh, look at change and draw a parallel with the social strata, you know, you know, uh, uh, strata is, is uh, inspiring and he was the one who established a correlation between language structures and social structures. So, we will know more about Lebov and uh, in our series we will talk about two prominent case studies and most influential and inspiring works that he carried out, one in Martha's Vineyard Island as part of his MA dissertation and in 1963 and the other in New York City as his PhD project in 1964 published later in 1966. So, so to begin with, let us understand and know who this person is, who is William Lebov his major works, his influence on uh, social linguistics and the honors and uh, awards he received. So, we will quickly go through the bio of Lebov. So, William Lebov was born on December 4, 1927 in other Rutherford, New Jersey, USA. Lebov majored in English and philosophy and studied chemistry at Harvard University in 1948. He had a family business and he worked as an industrial chemist in his family business from 1949 to 1961 before he moved to linguistics. Uh, as I told you, he worked on the change in dialect of Martha's Vineyard Island, it is a wonderful case study that clearly establishes the linguistic attitude, strata and social you know identity, how social identity is reflected in linguistic structures and how linguistic structures become you know uh, influential and representative of their social class and group identity. So, in 1963, he worked on this Martha Vineyard's Island study as part of his MA dissertation and he got his PhD from University of Columbia, 
Columbia University in 1964 under a prominent social linguist, Professor Uriel Vendrick. He worked as an assistant professor of linguistics at Columbia from 1964 to 1970 before he became associate professor at the University of Pennsylvania in 1971 and later he became full professor. In 1976, he became the director of the university's linguistic laboratory, a very illustrious career and uh, he had great influence on, on other scholars across America and England. And in 1974, we see Peter Trudgill's publication of his PhD thesis on, you know, uh, Norwich's speech as part of his PhD topic. Peter Trudgill rose to a prominent social linguist later on. Kem Pittite adopted his methods for West Yorkshire speech. Uh, Wolfram and Riley in 1968, they you know, replicated the same method and technique for studying speech in Detroit and variation research on Romance languages was initiated by a project with a large random sample of Montreal French conducted by D. Senkoff and G. Senkoff published in 1973. So, he had a lot of influence on a variety of scholars across America and England, Canada of course. His contribution in correlating linguistic structures and social structures is immense and it became the major thrust of social linguistics during that period and it continues till date. If you look at the major works, major select works of, of Lebov, apart from these two case studies that he carried out in Martha's Vineyard Island and New York City for his MA and PhD thesis, other works include the study of non-standard English published in 1969 and then a very, very important and significant work he carried out on Afro-American vernacular English, where he argued that AAVE that we call in short Afro-American vernacular English and he argued that this variety should not be looked upon as a perverted version of standard English. It should be treated as a variety of English independent it is in own right and uh, no value judgment should be ascribed to this variety. That is a major work known as language in inner city studies in black English vernacular published in 1972. Then another major work comes out in again 1972 social linguistic patterns. Uh, a major work very influential work is Principles of Linguistic Change, Volume 1, for which he was awarded. Uh, again, second volume talks about internal factors and third volume talks about social factors. So, this, this, this volume is, is very uh, significant, important and influential. Then another major publication that was done in 2010 was cognitive and cultural factors and he has worked on narratives and you know people's account of their life and other things so so much work he has carried out and uh, you know he was the one and he is known for a major contribution in social linguistics where he correlates linguistic structure with the social structure social stratification of language. This is what William Leboff can be summed up as, his works can be summed up as. So, he had a major influence on social linguistics. He is known as one of the founding fathers of modern social linguistics and he is the one who pioneered a 
different technique and approach in looking at language called the variationist tradition. So, language change and variation, this is what his method first was. Uh, with this bio note on Leboff, let us move to his Martha Vineyard's Island, uh, you know, study. But before that, let us quickly have a brief, uh, you know, survey on honors and awards as an acknowledgement of his major contribution in social linguistics, you know, bestowed upon him. So, the major honors and awards, if you list, there are a few here I have listed, which are he received David H. Russell Award for Distinguished Research in Teaching English in 1968. He became a Gangenheim Fellow in 1970 to 1971 and again in 1987 to 88. Lebov received honorary doctorates from various universities, among them two are very prominent, one Upasala University in 1985 and University of Edinburgh in 2005. In 1996, he won the Leonard Bloomfield Book Award from Linguistic Society of America for his work on Principles of Linguistic Change, Volume 1. He was awarded again in 2008 as a co-author of the Atlas of North American English. In 2013, Lebov received Franklin Institute Award in Computer and Cognitive Science for establishing the cognitive basis of language, variation and change through rigorous analysis of linguistic data and for the study of non-standard dialects with significant social and cultural implications. Uh, last but not the least, he received the Neil and Sir Smith Medal for Linguistics by British Academy for lifetime achievement in the scholarly study of linguistics and his significant contribution to linguistics and the language sciences. So, these are some honors uh, which stand as an acknowledgement of his major contribution to the field. Uh, moving on, now let us come to the first case study which, which rose to prominence and uh, you know uh, announced arrival of a new scholar with new technique, methods and approach that is Martha's Vineyard Island study that he carry out, carried out. Uh, but let us look, look, look at the Martha Vineyard Island, the place where he carried out this research. It is a small tiny island, uh, it, is, it is located 3 miles off the east coast of the USA and it had a total population of uh, 6000, a very close knit group, very close knit society. It hosted more than 40,000 visitors every year in summer and most of the original inhabitants were very opposed to the summer visitors. So, this was the background of the place where he carried out this work. This study took place between 1961 and 1963, so two years of, of work. Lebov studied the variations in diphthongs and uh, which, which he identified as social linguistic variable. We will know more about it soon. The pronunciation of the diphthongs, combination of two vowels for you, diphthongs are combination of two vowels. It varies in the community and is called a linguistic variable. He recorded 69 tape recorded interviews with his speakers from different ages and ethnic groups from the island. He used a scoring system for his analysis and the interviews were divided into age groups, right. Now, what was the theory implied, in the, the implication of the theory here in this study, what theory he had in mind and what was the hypothesis? 
So, he tried to see a particular linguistic variable and its distribution in the speech of the islanders to see whether it corresponds to their linguistic attitude, their collective social identity and it is not a random variable, but it has a significant pattern. So, linguistic variable is a feature that has two or more identifiable linguistic forms. It was a question of choice and he wanted to see what is the choice and what is the reason behind such a choice. So, centralized vowels diphthongs, why some speakers deliberately chose it and uh, what is the you know, position of occurrence, frequency of occurrence and motive behind using this centralized vowel. Uh, and variants differ in form, but that does not afflict their linguistic meaning. So, little variation in sound without change in the meaning. And the criteria for a linguistic variable frequent enough in ordinary conversation, structurally linked to other linguistic elements, exhibit a pattern of a stratification due to social factors. So, these are the parameters on which we identify a linguistic variable and the criteria that, uh, that you know, selects such variable that they are frequent enough in the ordinary speech, regular conversation. They are structurally linked to other linguistic elements. So, so their, their occurrence denotes some other linguistic elements. We will see this how this centralized vowel diphthong denoted the group identity and what was the motive behind this, right? Which was the age group which was particular about it, right? Uh, whether it was volitional, deliberate or natural, right? So, uh, if you look at the results of his work, he, he had 69 tape records of the elaborate speech recorded, he analyzed them, right? he transcribed and analyzed, uh, he al uh, uh, allotted scoring system for this variable and he, the result showed that degree of centralization of I and O by age level, if you see age 75 and above, 25 and 22, if you see 61 and 75, the frequency was 35 and 37. If you see 46 and 60, 62 and 44, but from the age group of 31 years to 45 years, we, have, we find a major significant shift 81 and 88. From 14 to 30, it was 37 and 46. So, this age group 31 and 45 was uh, the, that, that, that age group exhibited, demonstrated more affinity towards this raised centralized vowels. So, what are the possible explanations for this? Uh, a high degree of centralization shows belonging to the island and resistance against the summer people. So, this was a deliberate attempt by the inhib uh, original inhib uh, uh, you know residents of that uh, island to distinguish themselves from the outsiders, the visitors. It worked as a cohesive collective identity and it, it drew a line between the original residents and the outsiders. So, it was deliberate. Young people were still somewhat ambiguous and therefore, do not have such a strong centralization. So, this, this idea of we versus them was more prominent in the age group from 31 to 45. Uh, people of the age group of 31 to 45 probably had recently made experiences which led to the centralization of the diphthong. So, they had the urge to distinguish themselves in a different from the outsiders. So, this, this variation in pronunciation was a socio 
political ideological factor that forced them to sound different. Centralization indicates islander status, loyalty and solidarity. That is what exactly I was talking about. It is all about, it was all about identity, right. So, they wanted to identify with the island, original residents. So it's, they wanted to claim that they are the one who are originally in a, you know, residents of this island and inhabitant of this island. And they wanted to be segregated and separated, sound different and appear different from the 40,000 visitors they used to receive every summer. The sellers, Portuguese and native people used centralization to show equality with original inhabitants. Right? Uh, if you look at the outcome of the study, that was the fact that he demonstrated, but what is the outcome of this study? A big factor to consider when discussing the cause of these differences in pronunciation in Martha's Vineyard Island is largely down to the attitude to its you know, residents or inhabit inhabitants. Because they wanted to claim the island, they wanted to claim that they are the one who are the original people of this island, right. So, it was a kind of constructing a group identity and that was reflected in this linguistic structure. The heaviest users of this type of centralized pronunciation of diphthongs were young men who sought to identify themselves as native inhabitants age group 31 to 45, rejecting the values and speech style of the mainland, the visitors which they never liked on the island. The fishermen in particular also resented the influx of wealthy summer visitors and were antipathetic to their presence as they believed it infringed on their traditional way of island life. They, they, they perceived the threat to the tradition, culture and the, and the lifestyle of the islanders and that is why they wanted to sound different and be different and draw this line between the original inhabitants or residents of the island and the visitors of the island. The tight-knit community subconsciously ensured that they created a linguistic divide between them and us. This study shows that generations, occupations or social groups might be a big factor in language use as a social linguistic consideration. So, young Lebov worked on that island for two years as part of his MA thesis. The reason for choosing this, this particular uh, variable, linguistic variable was that he sensed after meeting many people having you know, informal meetings with different people, uh, recording their speech. There are some anecdotes and lots of stories about it, the way he collected data, uh, making them feel very emotionally charged, creating a context where uh, they would express uh, their views in their original you know, way. So, so, conversation would be very casual, uh, emotionally charged and he also you know, you know, uh, created a context where he recorded the accounts of people, their life, you know, their emotions. So, after mixing and meeting with these people, closely working with these people, he was able to identify these two variables and then he tried to look at the functions of these two variables, the choices people made in using these two variables and then he could understand the, the urge of this age group 31 to 45 who were in fact the, the, who, who believed to be custodian of the island's lifestyle, their value system and so, so social systems and they wanted to create a linguistic divide. So, it was a deliberate attempt in order to exhibit loyalty to the island, express solidarity to the island 
people deliberately use this particular variety, the linguistic variable to demonstrate their loyalty and association and the claim of assertion of their original inhabitant status as opposed to the summer visitors. So, this was a wonderful revolution in the world of linguistics where a linguistic variable, a small linguistic variable which is contextualized in a larger linguistic context had correlations with the social class, had correlations with the you know social purpose where the identity became a major issue. So, the social determinants like identity, age and the affinity to the island right uh, in sense of infringement on their lifestyle, a kind of threat they perceive from outsiders. So, these factors factored in distribution of this these two defunct centralized walls and uh, the youngest people would later it is it was predicted that the youngest people would later replicate the same thing. But the vibrant age group from 31 to 45 who perceived themselves as the custodian of these values and lifestyle of the island claimed the island. Older people did not care much, but the, the, the middle age group cared a lot about it and to be followed by the younger generation. So, this revelation that linguistic structures are embedded and you know correlated with social structures was a great revelation. The techniques he used social linguistic identifying social linguistic variable, linguistic variable that becomes a social linguistic variable. Then the idea of observer's paradox where the interviewers are the people who were being recorded did not get influenced by the presence of the tape recorder or the, the interviewer live of himself. So, he tried to create a context where the speech becomes casual, relaxed and the real sample of his speech comes out and recorded. He transcribed them, assigned values, values to each of these variables and counted. So, this approach was you know different from what at that time the Chomskyan idea of linguistics abstractness and computational aspect of linguistics was being talked about. So, Lebov's intervention, Lebov's method, techniques and approach intervened this linguistic study of language and you know study of language and it made a major change in linguistics and this this approach became more sharper and prominent in his second case study that was done in New York City in three uh, you know uh, shopping malls uh, of belonging to three socioeconomic three different socioeconomic classes and the tendency of again using a particular social linguistic variable and which was systematically done and published in 1966 social stratification of English in New York City and that created a wave and by the time that method was established very well, techniques were established, approach was you know welcomed by a variety of scholars and the his method techniques and approaches were replicated all around like you know Senkov and then Trudgill and Petit and other people in at different locations. So, this is the contribution of Lebov in social linguistics and this is the outcome and deductions from his first case study on Martha Vineyard's island. Uh, in our next video, we will talk about social stratification of English in New York City as the second case study which he carried out 
as part of his PhD. Uh, he received 1964 and this work was published in 1966. We will talk more about that in the next video. Uh, this is it for now. Thank you very much.